Trump is set to announce today that the U.S. will recognize Jerusalem as the capital city of Israel. And the U.S. will eventually relocate the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. The decision follows up on a campaign promise, but leaders from across the Arab world are sounding the alarm. Hamas, for example, already calling for a day of rage. Other factions are calling for three days of rage to protest this move. Joining me right now to talk more about that, as well as the tax package, is House Majority Whip, Congressman Steve Scalise. Congressman, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for joining us. Always great to be with you, Maria. Good morning. So let me kick it off with this move in Jerusalem. Uh, does this decision undermine the Trump administration's efforts to broker peace between Israel and the Palestinians? Look, I'm just back from Saudi Arabia, and I know that the Saudis have been a, a great ally for the U.S. They're obviously doing a revolution there. And incredibly, now that the, all of the people, whether it's the U.S., the Saudis, they see Iran as the enemy, they're even getting together with Israel. So there's really been progress made. The Saudis and Israel, who would have thought that? And yet, now this, it seems to be dividing people again. Well, I think if you look at a lot of the success we're seeing at bringing our allies together, that's been from the leadership of President Trump. He doesn't get enough credit for it, uh, but we had eight years of Barack Obama cutting deals with Iran, isolating our great ally, Israel, and it really did cause uh, a weakening of the relationship and, I think, a weakening of the ability to get peace, because if you're tilting the scale in favor of Palestinians at the expense of Israel, that set us back. So President Trump has reset that and, I think, shown that he's willing to back up our allies and, in this case, enforce the law. The federal law for over 20 years has said uh, that, the, uh, that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem. Obviously, it's been in Tel Aviv, the, the, the embassy has been, uh, but this is something that the president's uh, been talking about. And, uh, you know, again, the fact that he'd be criticized for following through on campaign promises, uh, I think, uh, makes people wonder uh, what, what the motivations are. But when a terrorist organization like Hamas is criticizing it, uh, then maybe he's on the right track. Well, that's a good point. I mean, Hamas is, a, after all, a terrorist organization I mean, a, a group. You're right. But, I mean, should he do anything? Should the U.S. be worried about all these protests, this day of rage that Hamas is promising? You know, they've had days of rage for years and years, and, and we haven't gotten peace. So the fact, again, that you've got the president of the United States and Donald Trump saying we're going to support and back our friend Israel uh, and, and our other friends all around the Middle East uh, look at that and say, finally, we have a president who's willing to back up our friends and maybe stand up for what's right in the world. And, and I think that gives us a better chance to get peace when you're not willing to roll over and let terrorist organizations dictate the terms. All right. Well, that's a very good point.